Hello everyone, myself Deepa Singh, working as assistant professor in Gyan Vihar School of Pharmacy at Sri Guru Jaipur. Today we discuss about different equipments or machines that we use for pallet formation or pallet manufacturing. In previous lecture, we already covered a maximum part of this pallet or palletization, including the introduction, uh, the advantages, disadvantages, different different techniques, or uh, how we formulate these pallets, including the procedure or different techniques for this is palletization. Uh, in this, we also uh, discuss the different conditions required for this pallet formation, including the temperature or uh, how we form these pallets, maybe different layering technique or functioning technique or spiralization. So these uh, information or these complete uh, description regarding the pallet we already covered in previous lecture. And in this lecture, we discuss about the equipments for the pallet or those equipment we use for manufacturing of the pallet. In previous lecture, we already see that this equipment part is a very important and these equipment play important role in manufacturing of the pallets. Uh, because uh, this pallet is a difficult process and a specific uh, or costly uh, equipment are required for this manufacturing of the pallet. So this palletization process or equipment that you use for palletization in this way study. And in this equipment and palletization before starting this topic, we should know about the basic object or learning object. This is the topic of industrial pharmacy and fifth semester subject. And after this introduction part, in this topic, we should know about the learning object or basic object. And this first is brief introduction of the equipment used for the pallet. This which are the equipment that you use for pallet formation and introduction of the each and every experience, how you handle the working condition, classification of the equipment used for the pallet. Uh, you first classify these uh, and then uh, know about the uh, starting introduction part to complete uh, procedure and uh, different uh, uh, technique for this palletization or study in this lecture. And next is working procedure of equipments for pallet. Uh, means each and every uh, equipment after classification or the introduction part, you should know about working of that particular equipment or for all equipment uh, for how you work that equipment. So the procedure of equipment is also important parameter. Next is introduction part. In this palletization can be defined as agglomeration process that covers the fine particle or particle of a bulk drug or exception into a small or free form or more less spherical meat called as palette. In definition part of the pallet, we already know that what is a pallet. Uh, in this, it is agglomerate or a spherical formulation or uh, spherical structure like formulation and maintain the size uh, of uh, uh, of uh, that uh, pallet and it is a small in size or due to the spherical and small in size uh, it can have a good free property or easily free flowing in nature and uh, this is known as pallet and in this technique able to formation of a spherical beds or pallet which mean uh, diameter usually ranging from 0.5 to mm Means these pallet is a very small in size, and these size uh, is depend on your selection, which uh, size is required or suitable for your formulation. According to this uh, technique or selection of the size, you manufacture your pallet in a small in the size, and usually this size is 0.5 to 2 mm is also for pallets. And next is it can be coated and usually uh, in controlled release dosage form. Means you can also coat these pallets when you coat this pallet, means that it is mainly used for control in this type of formation or for control formulation. So coating is done for the purpose of a control release formulation or formulation of control release dosage form. These are the techniques that we use for formation or manufacturing of palletization or pallet. In this technique, first is extrusion and spiralization technique. Uh, you use maybe extrusion technique or spiralization technique for this pallet manufacturing or pallet formation. And in this, next is the fluid bed granulation. So it is the next technique. In this fluid bed granulation, it takes place or uh, with the help of fluidized bed dryer, you form your pallets. Next is the spray conjuring. The spray conjuring is also one technique or one equipment that you use. And in this, may you maintain the cold condition and spray the polymer that you use in your pallet formation or your solution with the help of this spray dryer. And next is the spray dryer. In this uh, 
that there is almost a military spray function because in this also spring process have been stakes built, but there may be temperature change in the stakes built or some construction of the equipment is also changed. So these are the four techniques or four methods that uh, uh, use for, for pellet formation or uh, pelletization. And this first is extrusion and spheronization. And this extrusion is the necessary first step in the extrusion and spheronization process. Means uh, when you start forming your pellets with the help of this extrusion technique, uh, you should uh, know that first step is that you use spheronization or process that uh, uh, you use with the help of this, uh, spheronization as well as extrusion spheronization process. But it is a first step. And in the next uh, is the size of the sphere are determined by diameter of extrude use. I mean, different different of the size extrude are available, and uh, your particle or pallet diameter should be depend on your selection or uh, according to extrusion or which extrude you use for the pallet formation. So this uh, extrusion selection is very important, and uh, the particle uh, diameter is depend on the extrusion type or selection of extrusion. Uh, this extrusion uh, main responsible or main key uh, equipment of this is extrusion spheronization for maintaining the particular shape or required shape of your granules. And next is extrusion spheronization process can be broken down the following steps. So these are the steps of extrusion that is breaking down a different step. In this first is the powder uh, mix, and uh, then uh, it is the first step in this standard mixture is takes place, that is A. And this next is the plastic mass. Means after powder mix, it forms the plastic mass and it can uh, extrude out or extrude up with the help of extruder into the extrude or extrude like structure is formed. Means uh, first is the powder form or free flowing uh, powder particle after the mixing. It from the plastic mass or the gun mass, uh, which don't have a free flowing property or large size particle. And then after this mass, it passes through extrusion machine. And after extruder or with the help of extruder, uh, this material is extruded out. And uh, uh, this extruder you apply for this extrusion or extrude, you apply spheronization. And after spheronization, uh, bad sphere or some moisture containing sphere particles are formed, or maybe you can see that these are the pallets. And after the formation of these bad sphere, you apply the coating material or the coating uh, with the help of some coating solution. And simultaneously, drying process is also takes place. And finally, it's coated sphere or finally, coated pallets are formed. So this is a step or process for extrusion and spheronization. In first step, we are taking a powder or required powder, including API and excipient, and the mixing of this powder is takes place. Next step after mixing, uh, there's one mass or plastic mask is formed, and we pass this mass to extrusion machine or uh, extrusion. And uh, uh, after passing through this extrusion, they extrude out or uh, remove the material. And then the spheronization takes place, or with the help of this spheronization, uh, these uh, form wet sphere or wet pellet, is having on some moisture bending. And after wet sphere, a coated dryer is uh, with the help of this coated coating uh, is done, or with the help of some polymer coating material, to apply the coating material into a pellet. And after coating drying, is also simultaneously next uh, equation. Then this is your final coated sphere or pellet. Next is a screw extrusion. In this extrusion process, it's depend on two types. One is a screen or basket extruder, or second is a gear, uh, gear extruder. So these are the two extrusion process for uh, screw extruder. In this screw extruder, a commonly used in industrial application, highly pressure and heat can be created. Pharmaceutical product means uh, when we see the industrial equipment or equipment palletization equipment, then this screw extruder is largely used in industry and it has a good property or good application for industrial use as well as uh, there is some product that uh, high pressure or high heat can be made pharmaceutical product so you can maintain the particular pressure as well as temperature because too much high and show some problem or degrade your product or formulation. So this is the diagram. 
and this one is diameter of this is a screw extruder and this is a root part and uh, here is material flow and this is a channel uh, tap this corner and uh, this is a trailing flight and uh, this is your gap is known as channel flight uh, channel flight because this is your channel flight and gap between these two channel uh, this trailing uh, flight is known as channel flight and uh, this is a channel width means how much depth it is and it is a pinch and this is a helix angle this one and uh, this is a pushing uh, flight this one so it is a diagram of screw extrusion there's a different different uh, trailing flight on person and uh, this channel trailing flight have a sufficient uh, gap and this is gap is known as channel flight and there's a sufficient bed so this is a sufficient bed or channel bed and one pinch or uh, not one pinch there's a number of pinches also present and helix angle is at this scratch crucial so diameter is also small and uh, this is a diameter part so it uh, material flow or comes from this side to so this is through extrusion this is a diagram of through extrusion or procedure of extra extrusion in this we can see this uh, in a working condition then uh, this is a channel width between two uh, train or two uh, this uh, channels so this is a channel width and this is a screw diameter d means how much diameter it have so diameter is this one this is your diameter and uh, uh, this is a clearance because your material passing from this side so this is a clearance and uh, this is slide thickness uh, means how much thick is this or channel is this thick this is a slide thickness and the next is a pitch so this is a complete pitch and uh, you can see the diameter is looks like this and uh, this is regarding the uh, internal structure or structure of the uh, screw extrusion in this when we see the image in 3d structure then this one is the channel width a uh, channel depth and uh, this is a screw uh, this image is looks like a screw that's why the name is known as a screw extrusion so this is a screw and this is a pitch and this is a helix angle we found a screw we already see this angle in previous uh, slide and next is a barrel is this one so it's a complete diagram of this screw extrusion and in this screw extrusion it have been divided into two uh, different types we already see this uh, type in previous slide and this one is a screen or basket extrusion and second is gear extrusion so in a screen and basket extrusion lower density extrude and uh, relatively high thought uh, out uh, input means uh, in a screen or basket extrusion it is a type of one uh, extrusion and a gear extrusion so in this uh, screen as well as in basket extrusion low density extrusion is required or uh, use low density of your formulation next is relatively high throughput means the output is high or you also more throughput and density is uh, less required in the screen basket extrusion next is a gear extrusion in the gear extruded uh, extruder uh, product relatively high density it just opposed to a screen and basket extrusion require more uh, density or high density for formation of a pallet in this uh, gear extrusion and gear can, can be reduced and long lasting means uh, it take a good product or form good product and this is a long lasting in gear extrusion and uh, it have a high density compared to screen and basket extrusion uh, this screen and basket have a low density next it's a diagram in this one is motor or starting point is a motor and this is the side motor and we see and here is a fed hopper where you put your material so this fed hopper it comes in this and uh, it start rotating this is the rotor uh, it looks like this type and the hopper it looks like this type and uh, this is a front view so this is the front view and uh, you put your material from this and you do continuous rotation or continuous rotation of this uh, chamber it uh, extrude out the pallet or form this of material 
so you can see this uh, image in a rotation way. These are the rotor that uh, attach in this, or there's four rotor attached into in this. And in this, this is the extrusion screen. And continuously rotate this screen, put your material, and due to rotation, it from the granules or pellets or spherical particle with the help of this rotation or extrusion. So this is the top view, and the next is a basket extrusion. Uh, this is a 3D structure or a live uh, diagram of uh, basket extrusion industry. So this is actually looks like this type or this basket extrusion looks like this. And then this is a diagram of working condition of this basket extrusion. If there's one hopper, you put, uh, put your material at uh, this uh, your material to this hopper and after adding this material continuous rotation is takes place and in this rotation uh, your rotor are get rotated and um, due to rotation uh, the powder formed uh, some pallets or small particle and it uh, gained the shape of your pallets so this is the working condition of continuous rotating and there's a four roller and this is extrusion screen this is a working structure and this is the industrial level structure of this basket extrusion. Next is a gear extrusion. Uh, in this, uh, you can see that it's a screw-like or gear-like structure. And in this, uh, it's a part of this gear extrusion. And in this, uh, there's a different screw that you fit or you attach these two parts. And when we see the working condition of this gear extrusion, there's a stopper motor. This one is a motor of this gear extrusion. And uh, in this, there's a small gear as this. And uh, there's an extruder. And uh, in this, continuous rotation is takes place. And filament or fragment uh, wet is this. And in this large uh, wet of or bearing of uh, uh, some material or uh, material. And after this, a hot end is this. And the thermistor or thermocouple, or here's the one thermistor or thermocouple is present, and it is a heater. Uh, this one is the extrusion wheel to the material, or the material present in this air extrusion. And you maintain the particular temperature or provide the heat, and due to this continuous rotation, or uh, with the help of this motor, your drug or powder from the pallets or uh, spherical uh, particle. So this is known as extrude formation or pallet formation. Next technique is spheronization. Spheronization is another technique of formation of extrusion, uh, not extrusion, pallet. And then here is you use different equipment for formation of your pallets. And in this spheronization is the process of forming a spherical particle from a different board shape by and it has a diameter ranging from 0.5 to 1. So this is the process of forming a spherical or down shape pallets uh, in a different broad shape. And uh, the extrusion, uh, they are ranging from 0.5 to uh, 1. In, uh, um, in diameter. So this is the procedure and how uh, the pallets are formed with the help of this is spheronization or extrusion. And this, this is the extrude product means uh, first you add uh, all the powder containing including API excipient in your machine. And after adding this powder containing into a machine, it from the extrude product or extrude which is large in size. And continuously this extrude product formation is takes place. And after forming this extrusion, uh, it uh, breaking into small uh, group or small, small extrude form. This is a breaking of this extrude. And this is a smaller in size than your extrude product. And after breaking is uh, spheronizing or continuous rotation is takes place or due to this is spheronization, it converted into round uh, pallet or round particle and this is known as pallets. Since it's a very simple procedure, but uh, it requires specific equipment for formulation or manufacturing of the pallet as when a trained person is required for the formation of these pallets. And uh, in this diagrammatic way, uh, you can easily understand these pallets formation with the help of this spheronization of extrusion. 
So when uh, after adding the material or the powder with the help of this machine, it formed the mass. And this mass is from the large product extrude. And uh, this product is breaking down into small particle or small extrude. And then uh, after breaking it, uh, get a sterilized or it continuous rotation. It uh, converted to spherical particle or small extrusion. And there's a pellet is formed after sterilizing. In this, the size of a sphere are determined by diameter of the extrude used for the sterilization process, means uh, which uh, size of your uh, sphere of pallets are available or offer. And this uh, diameter of your sphere is dependent on the extrude or which extrude you use for the sterilization process. So extrude is very important and play important role for manufacturing of your pallets. And in example, in order to obtain a sphere with diameter of 1 mm, and the one mm screen is used for extrusion. Mainly one mm or one mm screen is used for this extrusion. And in this, uh, there's one cylinder. And the next is the cylinder with round edges due to sterilization or rotation. After that, they will form dumbbell shape or dumbbell shape. And uh, then ellipsoid is formed and then a spare at final stage. So this is a different stages of a spare formation or pallet formation. It's after cylinder, it is a, just change the corner or change the structure in cylindrical way with rounded end. And then we cylinder get converted into dumbbell shape. And after dumbbell shape, it again uh, rotate and with the help of this sterilization, it forms ellipsoid-like structure. This is ellipsoid-like structure, then the spare is finally formed. And in this next uh, method is also available. In this first is the cylinder like uh, uh, extrude or spiral and this again converted into rope like and after roping it is twisted dumbbell shape or dumbbell shape means when it twist this rope it converted into dumbbell shape or twisted dumbbell there's one twist or more than one twist and next is the square with cavity. There's a cavity in the square or in the particle, so it's there with cavity, and next to the final step is a spare formation. So these are the steps or two process where how the pallet is formed. This was cylindrical, after cylindrical it formed the rope like, and after roping it from the twist, the dumbbell shape, and for the twist is present next to the spare with cavity. There's a cavity or space between this particle, and next to the spare formation or final pallet formation. Sterilization machine design. In this sterilization, which machine used in this principle of a bed and basic machine consists of a rotating friction disc designed to increase friction with the product and uh, which spin at the high speed at the bottom of the cylindrical wall. Hence, design construction of this uh, spherical uh, machine is also unique. It has a high friction of the rotation, and uh, one disc is also present and designed. It's like uh, if you start rotating or increase the rotation, so there will be more friction product form, or they may get spin due to higher rotation or higher spin at the bottom of the cylindrical wall. And in this spinning friction, this uh, has a carefully designed glow pattern on a producing surface, and the, uh, this is a most often cross hatch, but several size and other types are available. Means uh, this is parallelization machine have a spinning friction or a dust, and so that uh, you can uh, easily handle by this uh, technique or design this technique. There's a group, uh, group pattern or designing of a group pattern in processing surface, and uh, most important is a cross fed but several sides and other type are available. Means uh, this uh, parallelization is also available in different shape and size and uh, different types also. So this is regarding the sterilization machine design. And uh, in this, these are the spare particle or pallet form uh, due to the sterilization continuous rotation according to requirement. This is a working condition. And so this is a rotating drive, which is attached in a sterilization. And this charge board is this one. And this is a stationary wall. And this is a safety cover. To avoid this unavoidable, some avoidable, unavoidable condition, and uh, so this is a safety cover, and this is a rotating plate which is present here below side. Uh, this is continuously rotating, and uh, due to this rotation, it from good quality small pallets, and uh, this is a stationary wall, and this is a discharge hole. 
So these are the working condition of this spiralization. And this mechanism of spiralization action as a machine rotate rod move in a rotationary movement or a move and rod movement. And the most important point that rod do not have a sufficient feasibility, but it should have a plastic property to have it. And so there is a continuous rotation which takes place. And in this uh, machine, there is one rotor or one rod is present. And these rod is continuously rotated or due to their rotatory movements or group and rod movements. And uh, there is some important point that uh, the rod does not feasible or don't form the spherical particle. But uh, this would uh, don't have feasibility. But your material should have a plastic in nature, a plastic property. And due to this plastic nature property, uh, they have an ability to form the spheronite or um, spare particle or pallets. So if uh, the rod don't uh, form the uh, particle, then your material itself form the pallets or spherical particle due to the plastic property, plasticity in their nature. So this is a rope-like molten. Is this one? There's a continuous rotation or rod get rotated, and due to this rotation, uh, plasticity of the material, uh, your product form uh, pallets or converted to spherical particles. Next is the ma main stage in the fluid bed, and uh, this is uh, takes place by three steps: bed product, energy supply, and dry product. So uh, in this first you uh, know about what is a fluidized bed or what is a restagnant uh, bed product, energy supply and dry product. It is the construction or working condition of this uh, fluid bed, short drying condition. In this there is a fluidized bed as this and uh, there is a porous pallet is here. You form pallet or the material or porous pallet plate. Uh, it's here, it's a one plate, and above this plate, there's a fluidized bed. This one is a fluidized bed. And uh, after passing this uh, air or this uh, condition, uh, you protect the dry granules out here, or you apply most granules from this side. And uh, there's a uh, premium chamber or hot air uh, in this non moist air outlet or insulated coat. Means construction is very simple. In below part, there's a one porous plate, and above this, there's a fluidized bed. And in this fluidized bed, your material is present, or your formulation moist granules is present. You put your moist granules from this side, and it comes in a contact with fluidized bed. And with the help of this fluidized bed, it uh, dry your granules or convert it to dry granules out from this side. And then this continuous hot air introducing or inlet is this one. This is two inlet or hot air inlet that you continuously apply hot air and this is the premium chamber and uh, here is uh, if excessive moist air is present then it can uh, goes out so this is a moist air outlet and this is the insulated hood this complete is known as insulated hood and this is a one outlet for this uh, air or moist air so these are the main stages or the procedure working condition of this food is bed next is a granulation and in this granulation, it also helps to form the pallets or a spherical particle. In this first is a strain procedure. In this, your powder, this is a particle that you convert into a pallet or into a spherical form. And this is a binder droplet. Now, this step is known as spray. Means uh, you uh, add your particle or powder onto a spraying binder or droplet. And after spraying, in, spraying this droplet or binder, uh, you are a granule, uh, not granule, powder and the wrap or take the uh, droplet from this binder. And when it taking the droplet from binder, then it forms the liquid bridge or interrupt or connect to each other. This is motioning. Uh, so you have a particle or powder connect to each other due to this binder droplet. This is a binder droplet which helps to uh, interrelate or inter connect the particles. And after this interconnection, there is a solidifying process or uh, solidifying of this droplet. And due to this finished agglomerate or final uh, uh, spherical particle or maybe uneven shaped uh, product is formed, and then you convert it into a uh, uh, spherical form or in a pallet form. So this is a final agglomerate, or your pallet is also an agglomerate form. And this is a blueberry structure. 
means it's a very simple structure or simple strap. In this first, the spring takes place. In this, you spray your binding solution on the powder, and uh, to this uh, spray or droplet, it can integrate or form the particles uh, which is interconnected to each other uh, with the help of this binder and uh, form the liquid bridge. This is a molding procedure, and next is solidifying. This uh, droplet gets solidified, and so uh, solid bridge is formed. And due to this solidifying, the or formation of this interconnected particle, uh, finished agglomerate is formed, and this is agglomerate structure. Next is the types of a fluid bag technology. In this uh, types of a fluid bag technology, there is three technology. One is a top spray. Second is bottom spray. Third is a tangential spray. In top spray, you spray your material or batter from top side. This is a top spray. You are applying this material from this top side. Here is the particles or powder from this pressure. And next is a bottom spray. In this bottom spray, you apply a batter solution. Or a polymer solution from this binder side or from this below side, and uh, this is known as bottom spray, and the uh, product is formed in this. And next is a tangential spray. In this tangential spray, you apply your uh, solution or binder from side, uh, like this type. And when you apply this solution from side, uh, this is known as tangential spray, and the material powder is present from this side. So this is a tangential spray. Which is apply on the files. So these are the different uh, fluid bed technology or three different uh, fluid bed technology in the storm, bottom, or tangential spray uh, fluid bed technology used. Next, in this tangential spray that we are applying to the side, in this liquid addition tray, inlet temperature and humidity. So these are the parameters you should control or maintain or you should know all these parameters when you manufacture the pallet or forming the pallets with the help of this standing chill spray. And this standing chill spray means first this liquid addition rate, how much uh, liquid you are adding or concentration of this uh, liquid. Uh, liquid is your binding solution. So you maintain that consistency as well as uh, velocity you know, or maybe you can say thickness of that particular liquid or uh, instead of uh, viscosity, you can also mention how much uh, solution is applied or it should be a sufficient amount and don't have an excessive amount. It should be applied in a control manner only. So this is regarding the liquid addition rate or addition of a binder to the uh, particle. And next is inlet air temperature. So in this, uh, you apply some temperature. Uh, we already seen the previous slide. With the help of this temperature, your uh, pallets get dry. So this inlet and uh, adding temperature should be uh, maintained amount or you should know about how much temperature you applied to your pallets. So you should apply in the required or sufficient amount of uh, inlet temperature. Next is humidity. Humidity is another parameter which you should maintain. If uh, it's a more than the you know, chances that your uh, particles will have more moisture content. Next is atomization air pressure. You are applying some pressure. So these atomization air pressure should be a controlled manner. Next is a binder type and concentration. How much binder concentration you are using. And this, uh, disk speed or disk gap means uh, how much speed you are trying or how much speed you are putting in this pallet formation. Or this gap is also in a maintained required condition. Next, in this, it's a diagram. FC is a centrifugal force by plate rotation. FC is a vertical force created by stored air. And FC is a gravitational force product to falls uh, towards the center. And in diagram, this is a tangential spray or gun. And this is a sample pore. And this one is FG. And this is your material. FG is your gravitational force. And this one is your F3, that is vertical force. And uh, next is FC, is this one, which is a plate rotation. And this is your material. So this is a tangential spray rotor process. Next is this roto granulation. And roto granulation is one of the most recent method for production of the spheroids. And a single unit spheroidizing system can be described using the term like centrifugal granulator, rotator. Or fluidized bed granulator, or the rotatory fluid bed, or rotatory process, or rotary granulation. So, this rotogranulation is one of the important techniques for formation of a spherical particle of pallet with the help of these granulation. And this is a largely used for the production of the spheroids and single unit spheroidizing system. 
in, in this you can say that different different equipment you can also use and uh, this may be used as a centrifugal granulator, rotatory fluidized bed granulator and rotatory fluid bed as well as rotatory process or rotatory granulation also. So in this problem, the blending of a formulation powder and including the active ingredient uh, filters disintegrant in a flow of the air. Uh, means you first pre-blend or pre-blending is takes place in this process and you pre-blend all your uh, excipient and then your APR and uh, it uh, may include all your excipients also. And next is the granulation of the mixture by spraying and uh, by suitable liquid binder onto the fluidized powder bed. The drying of the granulation product to desired moisture pattern means after uh, before pre-blending. Uh, or you can say that uh, in this uh, granulation pre-blending is takes place in this uh, all excipients as well as FPI are mixed or pre-blend and after pre-blending you fold uh, this material into the fluidized pad and uh, apply this on binder solution continuously and due to this binder solution there's a uh, agglomeration is formed or a granule product is formed and this have a desired moisture content also in this during processing, three mechanical forces causes particle movement, mixing, granulating. Uh, so these are the three conditions which is mechanically observed in this. One is movement of the particle, particle move from one side to another side or one place to another. And mixing of these particles is also observed and due to this mixing, granulating is, uh, uh, takes place or values are formed. In the first, uh, in the spinning of the disc generate the centrifugal force due to spinning the centrifugal force are generated or show the centrifugal force and second is the lifting force is generated by the hot air passing through the adjustable disc here yeah, means when you apply the hot air passing the hot air and due to this hot air or lifting force uh, is generated with the help of this hot air and this have an adjustable gap gap so you can adjust this uh, uh, flow and next is third is gravitational force causes a material to fall down on the disc. Means there is a gravitational force or gravitation uh, gravity is also present. And this gravitational force is helps to fall down your material, fall down of your particles onto the disc. And uh, when it falls down, uh, it form in a good quality product or pellets. And uh, due to this gravitation force, they are falling. And the mixing provide good mixing and result in the granules. And there the pre branding is takes place and due to this branding or mixing, uh, your granules are in a good quality because of particles or your excipient and API are continuously mixed or uniformly mixed. And in this drying and coating with good uh, coating uniformity. Means after forming these granules, uh, you can dry these granules and coat these granules with the help of some coating material and uh, this uh, coating is maintained the uniformity or uniformity coating of your of granules or particles. Next is a spray drying, and a spray drying is represent another process based on the globulation. Um, means it is a second technique or second process which will represent the process on globulation. And during the spring drying, a drug is a solution or suspension as a spray or uh, without excipient into a hot air stream, generating a dry or highly spherical particle. Means uh, in this way you apply in your uh, solution, maybe in a uh, solution form or in a suspension form and with the help of the solution suspension your particle from the pallets and uh, in this way uh, it have excipient or without excipient on hot air stream is continuously applied due to this hot air drying process is also takes place and spherical particles are formed and this is the process and this this is a drying chamber this one is a drying chamber and here is an atomizer that you put and this is a dry gas and you're applying here dry gas for drying your granules and this is atomizing uh, where the product is present in this chamber and uh, due to this atomization or drying gas is continuously applied and so, uh, atomizer helps you in spraying or getting that uh, particle or uh, uh, granules and uh, there's a drying gas due to this drying gas drying it also takes place and it comes back from this and there's a one cyclone. This cyclone helps to uh, dry a particle collect or store in this and the collector. So there's one cyclone, has an exhaust gas. If any uh, gas is present in this chamber, so it can easily move out through this exhaust gas outlet and your particle get collected with the help of this cyclone. This is a dry particle collector or dry particle 
which is in a dry form. And this is a liquid fluid which containing your coating solution or strain solution or maybe in a suspension form also. This continuously goes to this chamber with the help of this atomization atomizer and uh, this atomizer helps to spray your uh, coating material and uh, your powder or your formulation or your particle and uh, it can collect it or try with the help of this drying gas or extra excess gas that goes out to this outlet. Next is a spray punching. In a spray punching, uh, there's temperature changing and in this spray punching, the drug is allowed to melt, disperse or dissolve in a hot melt of the burn. Waxes, fatty acids, and other melting solid. Means in a spray punching, uh, your uh, material gets melt or allowed to melt, or maybe dissolve or disperse condition. And uh, this is a hot melt burns, burns, or in the form of maybe gums, wax, or fatty acids, or other melting solids. Uh, solids means uh, you can see that it may be available in a different forms, maybe gums form, wax form, or fatty acids, or other melting solids form. And uh, this is allowed to melt, maybe dissolve or disperse these hot mat. And dispersion is then spray into the uh, stream of the air and other gases. After this dispersion, you are spraying the stream. Um, with the help of the stream, you are spraying the air as well as other gases with temperature below the melting point of the formulation component. Means in this, you should maintain the temperature uh, is less and uh, temperature should be less uh, than your formulation or the component or don't have a more temperature than a component and under appropriate processing conditions, spherical conchilate pallets are often uh, this condition or augmenting the temperature because of your product or component, the pallets are formed or spherical conchilate pallets are often and the spray conchilate is similar to spray drying and it is called a spray chilling. And so this spray conchilling is a similar process of uh, spray chilling because in this you can also apply less temperature or cold temperature condition so this is a similar for uh, drying with uh, spray chilling process. This is a spray dryer. In this you are introducing hot air from this side. And this is your fill, which have a drug of uh, particles present in this. There's one atomizer. This atomizer helps to uh, continuously uh, spray your binding solution or the polymer solution. And this is your drying chamber where the material get dry and this is a moist air. If there's uh, excessive uh, air is present or moist excess air is present, then it goes throughout this exhaust or in this outlet. And there's a product conveying. Means after this, the product convey from this part and uh, this moist air is removed excessive amount. And due to this product conveying, your product goes in a bagging cyclone. And this is the one cyclone and uh, uh, when it goes in a cyclone or bagging cyclone, your product gets discharged from this side or this is the outlet for product discharge. And in this moist air, it goes through this exhaust or this is a cyclone separator. If any particle is present, then it comes through this product conveying part or excessive air goes through this or uh, maybe it will come in a bagging cyclone and uh, after uh, drying or complete formation of product, it again goes out to this exhaust. So this is a product discharge for a spray drying process. After completing this topic or as this lecture, these are the outcomes that you should know or these are the learning outcomes that you briefly know about the complete information regarding the, this lecture. In this brief introduction about the equipment used for the palette, means which equipment used for the formulation of the palette or different different equipment that you use for the palettes. Next is classification and equipment used for the palette. Uh, means which uh, equipment you use and classification of these equipment that you use for the formation of the palette. Working procedure of these equipment means how uh, each and every equipment work properly or not, or working procedure of these equipments. So we already see this uh, complete uh, information regarding the palette or the complete palette part because uh, starting introduction part or uh, manufacturing or different technique for manufacturing of palette we already covered in previous lecture. And in this lecture, we cover different ex uh, different equipment that you use for manufacturing of the palettes and how these equipments is working or the procedure for working of these equipment and which type of palette is found in some conditions also. So this is a learning outcome. After learning outcome, there's a reference part. In this reference, first is Anson Pharmaceutical Research Fund Drug Delivery System 8 edition by Lois V. Allen. 
Nicholas G. Popovich, Hawasi, and Sir published by BI Publication PBT Limited. Next reference is Textbook of Physical Pharmaceutics by C.V.S. Subramanian, uh, published by Bhalla Prakashan. Next reference is The Theory and Practice of Industrial Pharmacy by Leon and Lachman. Habits, L. Berman, Joseph, L. Green, third edition, published by Vagrasi Publishing House. Next reference is Modern Physical Pharmacy and Pharmaceutical Science, fifth edition by Patrick J. Sinko. Published by Lippercott, William, and Wilkins. So these are the four reference on our board. You can use anywhere or the combination for this palace topic. Next, after reference part, there is a question. But in first question, introduction of the seed or nuclear is the first step of one is cryopalatization, we use solution, suspension layering, and see the powder layering, there is extrusion and spiralization. In second question, air distribution system cost digestion is a part of a cryopalatization, major solution and suspension layering, see the powder layering and is the extrusion and spiralization layering. In third question, counter rotating double cylinder are uh, part of a crap. A low temperature to formulate solid spare takes place in this. A square palletization with the solution suspension layering, see the powder layering, and with the extrusion sterilization. And next is which of the is not a palletization process, spread rain, origin, melt extrusion, produced by granulation, extrusion, sterilization. And next six question steps involved in palletization process is its nucleation, these abrasion transfer, seals for substance, and six is all of the above. So these are the steps. You can select any one type step which is responsible for pallet process or palletization. Next in seventh question, melting section is another name for which section is a feed section, D is a transition section, C is a pumping section, and D is a collapsible section. So these are the four options related to melting section or melting of your material. You can select any one correct option or the best option. And next in eighth question, how are extrude material cool? After producing this extrude or extrusion, you should cool this extrude. So, in this, uh, how you cool this extrude or which condition you use to cool this extrude? There's a fourth option in A option, you use water, or maybe contact with steel surface, or maybe in C option, you apply the air or with the help of oil. So, which uh, is appropriate for drying this uh, extrude material or cooling of this extrude material? You can select any one correct option out of these four ABCD options. Next, in ninth question, Worcester process involves fluidized bed granulation with A is transitional spray, B is top spray, C is bottom spray, and D is none of this. Means this all ABC options are not correct. Uh, you should know what is a Worcester process or, or the role of this Worcester in fluidized bed granulation. So, according to this Worcester process, you select which is appropriate, maybe tangential spray or maybe top spray or bottom spray. Or not given in this uh, option, CBC. And next is a pallet are made from. There's a four option how pallet is formed or made. One is dead plant, B is a dead animal, C is a uh, through fungal action, D is a through mixing ethanol and bacteria. So these are the four options for this. Uh, you can select any one correct question and answer. So these are the all questions related to this palette, including introduction to the different techniques or different equipments. So we covered almost complete palette part. Uh, in previous lecture, introductory or mechanism or different technique for palette formation cover. And in this lecture, we covered equipment that uh, are responsible as the formation of the palette. So after completing this lecture or completing complete knowledge of this uh, palette uh, topic, you can answer these uh, questions very easily. So thank you so much for watching and listening to this video. Thank you.